treatment systems and provide fertilizer options for other agricultural crops grown in space. And also highlighting the scientific efforts from ESA and the Swedish Space Agency, let's start with MEMO-BC. This experiment aims to determine the direct and delayed post-flight effects on the neural stem, on neural stem cells, sorry, after long-term microgravity exposure, and investigate if the delayed effects are the result of genetic changes emerging during microgravity, or to be secreted components in the medium during flight. Dragon Freedom, SpaceX on the big loop. Please confirm that you are ready for final approach and visors are down. MCCX and Houston have pulled go for docking. Six Freedom, confirm all four crew visors down. We're ready for docking. Copy Dragon, go for docking. Ground will be enabling approach shortly. And a reminder, once you're inside the crew hands-off point, retreat and breakout are not permitted. Copy. All right, so there on your screen, on the right-hand side of your screen, is our Crew Operations and Resource Engineer, or SpaceX Core, uh, for tonight. That is Celie Grossman. We heard great news being given to the AX3 crew. Uh, they are, their visors are now down, and the teams in Houston are uh, ready for them to begin docking. So things are starting to get very exciting. This is basically what everything has been leading to for the last 36 hours. So we're very excited for the AX3 crew to get closer and closer to what will be their home for up to the next 14 days. Uh, with that, let's go back over to Gary Jordan, who is at Johnson Space Center uh, and, and tracking the final movements of Dragon Freedom. Thank you, Kate. Uh, right on time, we're about two minutes away from Waypoint 2's arrival. Uh, the teams here in Mission Control Houston have worked in tandem with the teams over in Hawthorne. Both teams have pulled go uh, to proceed uh, past Waypoint 2 for docking. Now in this scenario, instead of a commanded hold at the Waypoint 2 marker, which is 20 meters away from the International Space Station, the Dragon will make a brief pause at that Waypoint 2 mark, again 20 meters, only for a short couple of seconds just to reconfigure its software to change for docking mode. Uh, so it'll pause there for just a brief couple of seconds and then proceed inwards for docking. That is coming up very shortly. We're just about 40 meters away from the International Space Station now and closing. It's an orbital nighttime, so we're only going to see the um, navigation lights and, and docking light uh, blinking once we get views from the International Space Station teams here in Mission Control Houston monitoring from the perspective of the International Space Station and the joint operations with the teams over in Hawthorne. Flight control teams reporting that the rate uh, of approach is as expected. Everything's going well. And again, the teams have pulled go to proceed past waypoint two, coming up in about 10 meters. We're inside 30 meters. Not only are the teams you see here monitoring the approach of Dragon Freedom and the Axiom crew inside to the International Space Station, we also have NASA astronauts Laurel O'Hara and Jasmine Mogbelli inside the International Space Station monitoring the approach as well. Now getting some views of Dragon. In the orbital nighttime, you can see those service section Dracos firing to keep its attitude right on the docking axis and its range rate as expected. Green starboard light and uh, 
red port light, navigation lights on the forward end of Dragon coming into view. Again, we are in an orbital nighttime, so it is a bit dark. Those specks you see in the frame are uh, dead pixels from the radiation on the uh, camera. Confirmed waypoint to arrival. Dragon is now pausing and reconfiguring for its approach to the docking port. Station Houston on the big loop. Drag is on final approach and is go for docking. Monitor per steps five and six and one decimal one zero two. Dragon approach and retreat monitoring. Station copies. We see vehicle mode approach to docking port range decreasing. We copy. The waypoint two pause is over and we're proceeding with final approach now inside 18 meters from the International Space detected. Station. Copy. Laurel O'Hara, NASA astronaut in the International Space Station monitoring the approach. As the vehicle is just 15 meters away from the International Space Station where she resides, seeing the range rate, the rate of approach to dock with the International Space Station being as expected inside 15 meters and closing. A little inside 13 meters, the range rate continues to decrease. That's as expected. Flight controllers are estimating just inside three minutes from contact with the International Space Station. Freedom is at 10 meters. Copy 10. Dragon Commander Michael Lopez Alegria confirming inside at 10 meters. Dragon continuing its approach as expected. We may see a brief handover, a loss of video for just a couple of seconds and regain it. There's a chance we'll have it continuously through this, but if we do lose it, we will expect to regain it back by the time of contact. Five meters. Copy five meters. Inside five meters at the two meter mark, we may hear the call out chop, crew hands off procedure. At that point, the crew cannot command an abort. Everything looking good though. Inside four meters. meters. Copy two. Loss of signal as expected.
Dragon SpaceX, soft capture confirmed. You heard that call out from the crew operations resource engineer in Hawthorne, California, 442 AM Central Time. Dragon Freedom has made contact and soft capture with the International Space Station as the two were flying together 262 statute miles over the South Pacific Ocean. Ring retraction in progress. It. With a good soft capture, the ring is now retracting, pulling Dragon closer in with the International Docking Adapter aboard the International Space Station. This is part of a series of steps to formally hard mate the uh, Dragon to the International Space Station after the soft capture ring is fully retracted and bringing the Dragon inwards. There is a series of 12 hooks that will secure Dragon to the International Space Station for what's called a hard dock. After that, the umbilical will be deployed, uh, providing power and communications and data between the Dragon and the International Space Station. This is the docking sequence. Once an umbilical is extended and mated, the docking sequence is complete. Again, that soft capture time where Dragon made contact and a soft capture with the International Space Station, 442 AM Central Time. Station and Dragon were 262 statute miles over the South Pacific Ocean. Ring retraction proceeding as expected, getting views from one of the cameras on the Japanese exposed facility on the forward end of the space station, seeing the starboard side of the Dragon. As we continue to uh, monitor the progress of this ring retraction, now getting some sun illuminating the nadir or earth-facing side, and now the whole thing of Dragon Freedom. Sun is rising over the uh, South Pacific Ocean as Dragon and International Space Station continue to fly on a southeastern trajectory. Flight controllers monitoring the ring retraction and the alignment uh, with the international docking adapter to proceed with driving those hooks. Uh, they'll be driven in uh, two sets, gangs of six, a uh, total of 12 hooks. They'll be driven again six at a time. The rated hook indicators are starting to form green, uh, showing some good alignment, still tracking. And Dragon SpaceX on the big loop, ring retraction is complete. Docking sequence is holding for MCS reconfiguration. Good milestone, the ring retraction is complete. We're seeing good alignment. This is quite a dance. It's not just the Dragon performing some of these maneuvers to secure Dragon to the International Space Station. International Space Station itself performing a series of attitude control configurations uh, to prepare for the hard docking sequence. Once station's attitude control is configured properly, we'll go ahead and proceed towards the hard docking and driving those hooks.
the teams you see here uh, in Houston on the right and Hawthorne, California on the left work together to bring Dragon to the International Space Station. We're still going through the docking sequence uh, to formally mate uh, the Dragon with the International Space Station, We're seeing good alignment with that ring retraction, and uh, looking forward to proceeding to that hard dock and driving those hooks. Again, 4.42 a.m. Central Time was when we made contact and soft capture with the International Space Station. Dragon Freedom coming more clearly into view. Station Houston on the big loop, MCS configured, proceeding with hook driving. Station copy. Attitude control configured on the International Space Station side. We're just using the control moment gyros for this sequence. With the station in the proper attitude, we can proceed towards uh, driving those hooks. Again, we're going to do them six at a time, total of 12 hooks. Once both set of hooks are traveling and have secured, uh, that'll complete the hard docking sequence, and then we'll deploy that umbilical. The first set of six hooks are currently driving. We can expect the hooks to drive uh, about two minutes apart from one another. A whole, holistically, we're looking at about four minutes of driving hooks. Again, six at a time. Stand by for the hook's performance. But it should be just a, f a few moments until we complete that hard dock. Again, that's not the end of the docking sequence. After a hard dock, we'll deploy the umbilical. Uh, between the Dragon and the International Space Station. This provides data and uh, power between the two vehicles. Dragon, up to this point, during its flight after launching on January 18th, has been relying on its batteries and the solar arrays you see on the trunk of the vehicle. That's the black part that you see on the space-facing side, gathering power as it continues to orbit the Earth. Once those umbilicals are deployed, uh, they'll be relying on the station's power, gathering power from the station's solar arrays. Hooks continuing to drive, seeing a good seal on the international docking adapter interface. Again, those first set of hooks are continuing to drive. Teams are seeing a uh, good set of first hooks. Those uh, first set of hooks have driven and have closed. Now the second set of hooks are driving. Again, 12 in total. So the first six have been secured. The next six are driving. That'll complete the hard dock of Dragon to the International Space Station. One more step after that, deploying that umbilical.
Again, we have a soft capture of Dragon Freedom to the International Space Station. That was at uh, 4.42 a.m. Central Time. We're now in the hard dock sequence. Twelve hooks uh, are used to secure Dragon. The uh, first set of hooks... The first set of hooks have driven. Dragon we just heard that second hook. capture hooks. is complete. So 12 hooks, uh, all deployed, all securing Dragon for a hard dock to the International Space Station. One more step to complete the docking sequence, deploying that umbilical. In the meantime, with a hard dock that does secure the Dragon to the International Space Station, they don't have to be as careful with the loads imparting on the inside. Typically during this sequence, they uh, have what's called an exercise constraint. So the astronauts on board station, all seven of them are not allowed to exercise during that time. So there's no oscillation, no vibration. They've just lifted that constraint for the crew inside so they can get uh, on with their workout. In the meantime, we're still standing by for the deployment out of the umbilical on Dragon to complete the docking sequence. Station on two, we are stepping out of Dragon Approach Monitoring. You stand copies and concurs. Welcome to Space Station Axiom 3, looking forward to seeing you soon. Laura, we're excited to get started. With all hooks driven, Laurel Hera and Jasmine Mogbelli inside the space station are relieved of their monitoring duties, welcoming the crew to the space station. The soft capture ring has been stowed, all 12 hooks are driven, and the umbilical is now deploying. We are almost done with the docking sequence. And Dragon Freedom, this is SpaceX. Docking sequence is complete, and the ground will be enabling hardline power and comm connections shortly. You are go to dock your suits per procedure 4.012, and we'll go ahead and make sure cameras are external. 4.010 And copy Dragon, just to note that's 4.012. And with that, Dragon Freedom and the Axiom Mission 3 crew inside has formally docked to the International Space Station. The docking sequence is complete. After completing a capture and soft dock at 4.42 a.m. Central Time, all 12 hooks have secured Dragon to the station. The umbilical has been deployed. Laurel O'Hara and Jasmine Mogbelli have been released of their duties. The crew inside is able to exercise. Uh, inside the space station is able to exercise. And the crew inside Dragon is able to doff their suits or take off their suits. The dynamic portion of docking uh, and the safeguard needed for those suits is complete. Uh, the Dragon uh, crew it will now doff their suits and prepare uh, for entering the station uh, in just about uh, approximately an hour and a half. Uh, maybe maybe some change, but we're looking at a hatch opening approximately uh, 6.30 
a.m. Central Time. If they stick with the timeline, we'll continue to monitor and provide updates uh, and continue our coverage uh, of the Axiom Mission 3 crew's arrival to the International Space Station. But based on current planning, uh, that is what we are planning for. After hatches are uh, opened, uh, the crew members of Expedition 70 uh, will welcome the Axiom Mission 3 crew uh, to the International Space Station. And the uh, cadre of 11 uh, will gather for a welcome ceremony uh, to begin their 14-day stay, their journey aboard the International Space Station. Again, teams in uh, control rooms on the uh, International Space Station flight control room on the right and SpaceX flight control team on the left in Hawthorne, California, working in tandem to bring the Axiom Mission 3 crew to the International Space Station docking uh, at 4.42 a.m. Central Time. Now, with the docking sequence complete, uh, the, the crew and the teams will make steps uh, to bring the Axiom Mission 3 crew inside the International Space Station. One of the primary things that will happen over the next hour and a half before the hatches are opened is there is a space in between the Dragon Hatch and the International Space Station Hatch called the Vestibule, currently at vacuum. We need to bring that up to the equalize the pressure between Dragon and the station, uh, about what we find at sea level, 14.7 uh, pounds per square inch. That uh, process will take some time, introducing air and making sure uh, there are no temperature fluctuations and we're getting a good read uh, to make sure there are no leaks uh, as we methodically bring the pressure up from vacuum up to 14.7 PSI. SpaceX Freedom on the Big Loop contact from the cabin mic. And Dragon SpaceX, we've got you loud and clear on the cabin mic. We'll hear these periodic check-ins from the crew as they make their way through the process of doffing or taking off their suits and getting ready to open up the hatches, configuring the inside of the Dragon Cabin uh, for uh, eventual uh, ingress and welcome into the International Space Station. Cabin Mike uh, being Station inside Houston, the Dragon the outside the suit. And PMA ingress. Two. Hey, Laurel, we give you a go for 2.102, step 1.1, one one, and step 2.2. Two. Uh, Houston, Houston, Houston, Houston, Now, from inside the International Space Station, you're hearing uh, Laurel O'Hara re um, repeating some of the steps on her end. Uh, after uh, taking on the job of monitoring the spacecraft's approach and docking to the International Space Station, she now moves on to the methodical steps of opening up the hatch and preparing uh, the International Space Station for the entry of new crew members. Uh, there are several hatches she'll have to open and uh, uh, areas she'll have to prepare uh, in order to welcome the crew. There are two hatches uh, that she'll have to work with. First is the no two forward hatch uh, that has been currently closed through the docking operations. That just allows her and the International Space Station crew access to the pressurized mating adapter. It's really a channel to get us all the way down to what's called the A-pass hatch. Uh, this is the hatch uh, that on the other side is that vestibule currently at vacuum. Uh, so she'll be opening up those hatches and preparing the pressurized mating adapter. Uh, she'll put some covers on some of the hatches just to minimize 
various bumps uh, and uh, hazards along the way so the crew can in ingress uh, safely into the International Space Station for hugs and handshakes later. Uh, we, If uh, we stick with the timeline, we're expecting that hatch to open in just about an hour and a half, 6.30 a.m. Central Time, but again, we'll continue to monitor the crew Dragon SpaceX, on their the steps. big loop, if desired, you can reference your procedure 4.400 for monitoring vestibule pressurization. The 4.400. It'll be Laurel O'Hara on the uh, n on the station side performing some of the steps for vestibule pressurization, but the crew operations resource engineer in Hawthorne reading up to the Axiom crew inside Dragon, which you see on your screen, they're able to monitor along as well. That vestibule is that important gap in between the Dragon hatch and the station hatch. Right now at vacuum will take uh, quite a bit to bring up to pressurization. 14.7 psi is a slow With you on two. and methodical process. Station on two, no two forward hatches open. Houston copies. Wasting no time, Lauro O'Hara has confirmed that from inside the International Space Station that no two forward hatch is open. Again, that just allows Laurel some access to the pressurized mating adapter. This is the channel way that brings her to the A-pass hatch. Now that hatch will not be opened until that vestibule is pressurized. So with access to the pressurized mating adapter, she'll be able to work through the steps uh, to start the vestibule pressurization. Again, it's a methodical process, so it, uh, from vacuum, it's brought up to a checkpoint at five pounds per square inch, uh, and is, uh, once that pressure is uh, monitored for just a bit and looks stable to make sure there are no initial leaks, they'll go ahead and introduce air into that vestibule to pressurize it to equalize with the International Space Station and Dragon at 14.7 PSI. Meanwhile, inside the Dragon Axiom crew is doffing or taking off their suits. Uh, they'll uh, be changing into their garments and setting the Dragon cabin in such a configuration that it is ready for them to ingress the International Space Station. Laurel O'Hara getting a jump start on that vestibule pressurization, already starting some of the initial work, again, to bring that vestibule pressure up to 14.7 PSI.
quick recap, uh, Dragon Freedom and the AX-3 crew have arrived at the International Space Station docking at 4.42 a.m. Central Time. Dragon has been hard docked and the docking sequence is complete. Umbilicals are mated and hooks are driven to secure Dragon to the International Space Station. Crew inside is uh, doffing their suits and preparing for ingressing the International Space Station. It will take some time though. On the other side, on the International Space Station side, Laurel O'Hara is preparing the uh, International Space Station and the vestibule in between the hatches of Dragon and Space Station uh, to bring it up to pressure. She's already opened up the forward hatch on the uh, Node 2. There's Dragon also another hatch. On the big loop, ISS power connection is established and our vestibule leak check is in progress. X Freedom, wake up. So that confirmation uh, confirms that the link uh, enabled by the umbilical between Dragon and International Space Station is providing good power, good data, looks secure. Um, in addition, Laura O'Hara has again opened up that Node 2 forward hatch and has begun the vestibule pressurization. Um, this is a methodical process, so the first step is to bring it up to about five pounds per square inch uh, and leave it there as a hold uh, to uh, make sure uh, that it is not leaking. This is the leak check uh, in its methodical uh, process of bringing up to pressure. We're shooting for 14.7 pounds per square inch. That's what will equalize uh, the vestibule between the uh, station and Dragon. Uh, currently enjoying pressures uh, of what uh, typically what we see here at sea level on Earth. Again, that vestibule pressurization leak check is underway.
For those just joining, we are continuing our coverage of Axiom Mission 3 crew's arrival to the International Space Station. The teams are methodically working to pressurize the vestibule um, and uh, open up the hatches to welcome the Axiom crew to the International Space Station. Quick recap, the uh, crew arrived, the Axiom Mission 3 crew arrived at the International Space Station, making contact and soft capture at 4.42 a.m. Central Time. At the time, the Dragon and Station were flying together 262 statute miles over the South Pacific Ocean. The soft capture ring uh, retracted, bringing the Dragon in towards the International Docking Adapter, and after a good alignment, drove 12 hooks to secure Dragon uh, tightly to the International Space Station for a hard dock. The umbilical was deployed between the Dragon Put and the International the Space Station. With you on the big loop. Well, just wondering with the uh, delay in docking, do you have an update for the time of the events coming up, the joint events? All right, Mike. Um, we can't give you the best estimate right now. Uh, what we recommend is getting with the station crew uh, and talking it over and let us know when you're ready. Laurel, we have about three minutes left. This is Mission Control Houston standing by monitoring the chatter here uh, and the progress of the vestibule leak checks and the crew's progress of welcoming the Axiom Mission 3 astronauts aboard the International Space Station. We're looking at uh, about another Dragon minute. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop, just looking for a status on suit doffing and if you've gotten into suit drying yet. Uh, seats one and four are out of their seats and out of their suits, and both suits are drying. Seat three just egress the seats and will be doffing here shortly. All right, copy that, Mike. Thanks. So, quick status on the crew's progress of uh, opening up those hatches. That communication you just heard was from the crew operations resource engineer in Hawthorne with the mission control teams and with uh, SpaceX in California. 
Uh, we're asking for a status from the Axiom Mission 3 crew. Uh, they are partway through their suit doffing, meaning taking off their suits and drying. They hang them out uh, and make sure that the water uh, is released. Uh, making some good progress there. In the meantime, on the space station side here in Houston, monitoring that vestibule leak check. When the um, vestibule pressure is brought up from vacuum to five pounds per square inch, there's a, a period uh, where the teams allow for temperature fluctuations to dampen um, in order to have a good leak check. There's a little bit of oscillation, so uh, allowing time to pass and allowing the temperature to sort of equal out uh, allows the team to set a clock for approximately 15 minutes, monitor the uh, pressure inside the uh, vestibule, make sure it is good to go, and then after the 15 minute mark proceed with uh, uh, bumping that vestibule pressure all the way up to equalize with the International Space Station. Teams working together uh, here in the United States, in Houston, Texas, on the right, International Space Station flight control teams, um, and NASA's Johnson Space Center monitoring uh, the International Space Station and the uh, pressurization of the vestibule between that spacecraft and Dragon Freedom, welcoming Axiom Mission 3 astronauts to the International Space Station. We're working in Station tandem Houston with teams over in Hawthorne. And leak check. Hey, Laurel, leak check is still in work. We're going to need another 10 minutes. Wait, 10 minutes. The Capcom here in Houston, William Vu, um, talking with Laurel Hera, who is uh, working on the vestibule leak check. It's holding at about five pounds per square inch, but we're just taking some time to evaluate and make sure that data is good to go and that there are indeed no leaks um, as we continue, uh, before we continue uh, with the pressurization of that vestibule up to equalize with the pressure of the International Space Station. Now, as we're waiting for those leak checks and waiting for some good data, again, we're working in tandem with the teams over in Hawthorne, California. The Dragon flight control teams uh, brought the Axiom Mission 3 crew from launch all the way to rendezvous and dock with the International Space Station. Let's check in with the teams over there with Kate and John. 
Thanks so much, Gary. Great words there. And it's safe to say now that 37 hours after they lifted off from Kennedy Space Center, the AX3 crew has arrived at the International Space Station, as you can see there on your screen. Uh, I'm sure that they will all be very eager to oh, yeah. have that hatch opened in uh, just a little while. Uh, in order to get here over the last 37 hours, the Dragon capsule executed a number of burns in order to chase down the International Space Station. Um, you know, from lifting off at Kennedy Space Center uh, and then reaching the station as we see it now. A number of things occurred, including uh, basically those orbital maneuvers in order to get to the station uh, and approach it in a very uh, slow, calm, choreographed manner as we have seen over the last couple hours. Uh, the crew also had the opportunity to tune in with us and do an on-orbit mm -hmm. event um, about only 90 minutes after they yeah, took off. very quick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and really, this is just the beginning of their mission. Um, they're they're they're going to be here for up to 14 days. Oh yeah, and it's going to be a packed mission, Kate. Uh, over the course of the next 14 days, the crew will be heavily focused on payload and research operations. This is the core of their mission. In fact, that's over 230 hours of combined research efforts. So much. It is. <laughs> and what's really cool about it is like we know that payload utilization is such a commodity on station, and this gives an opportunity for research agencies, governments, to really get that dedicated time from these crew members. That's really, really important to them. Um, but additionally, you know, crew's also going to be heavily involved in the arts outreach. And I'm so excited for that. I am too. <laughs> I, I love that aspect of spaceflight. It's an essential part of human spaceflight and expeditions, and I'm really excited about it. And in addition, a lot of public outreach and engagement, because after all, as we've mentioned, this is Turkey's first flight. So this is going to be a packed mission for the crew. It's going to be an exciting mission for the crew. There's tons of research that's going to be going on over the next two uh, uh, next two weeks on ISS. And really, this is the goal of um, ultimately these private astronaut missions, right? Yeah. Commercializing space. You need this kind of energy put into a very short period of time. That is true. Very exciting. Uh, you mentioned energy, and they're going to need a lot of it oh, because, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, they are up at the International Space Station, as you mentioned earlier in the webcast. Freedom Houston on the big loop. Stand by for hardline audio config. All right, so uh, the the folks on board station are continuing uh, to work with uh, the teams in Houston and here in Hawthorne in order to finish the, the um, final preparations, both Dragon and uh, on station for the opening of the hatch. Um, but we were talking about uh, all the work that they're going to have to do, and they're going to they're, they're going to need a lot of energy to get through the next two weeks because uh, they they are up on orbit now. And it's going to be very busy. Yeah. Uh, not only uh, do they have scheduled sleep periods and scheduled meal periods and all that science, they're also going to want to, you know, take an opportunity exactly. to sit in the cupola, actually, exactly. in the in the launch broadcast. Right. Uh, there were some very cool words from the AX2 pilot, John Schaffner, and <laughs> he said, sit in the cupola as much as you possibly yes. can. <laughs> yes, and how could you not, with views like that, how could you not want to take in as much of that as you can, yeah. right? And also while they're up there, they're gonna be wanting to take in as much as they can from these other crew members. Absolutely. Right? We have two dragons on board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a packed ISS. Yes. And they're gonna to want to get as much as they can and take that back home and talk to their nations about yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. So talking about that crew, while we're waiting for Dragon and the AX3 crew to actually go through the hatch and meet the rest of the ISS crew, let's go ahead and meet this AX3 crew. So the commander of our flight today, Michael Lopez Alegria, or MLA, is no stranger to Axiom missions, Dragon, or the space station. In fact, AX-3 marks his sixth mission to space, having completed three space shuttle flights and a Soyuz mission as a NASA astronaut prior to commanding AX-1 with Axiom Space. And today, when not in low Earth orbit, or 
docked to the, <laughs> to the ISS, MLA serves as Axiom Space's chief astronaut. Our pilot on today's flight, Colonel Walter Villaday from the Italian Air Force, uh, has taken his inaugural trip to low Earth orbit. Villaday currently serves in the Italian Air Force and as the head of the Italian Air Force's representative office in the United States. He has completed cosmonaut training as a space engineer, participated in multiple analog training missions, and flown a variety of aircraft and missions as an active flight engineer in the Italian Air Force. Our third crew member for today's mission is mission specialist Alper Izarache. Alper is the first Turkish astronaut to go to space. With 15 years of experience across a myriad of aircraft for the Turkish Air Force, Izarache got his start in the Air Force Academy in Istanbul, Turkey, and earned a master's degree from the U.S. Air Force Institute of Technology. He then flew as a commercial airline captain for a number of years before returning to duty in the Turkish Air Force. And finally, uh, our mission specialist, Marcus Want, a lieutenant colonel in the Swedish Air Force. In November of 2022, Marcus was selected by the European Space Agency as an astronaut reserve. However, with the AX-3 mission, he now becomes the first project astronaut in ESA's history. This is, this is a new designation within their ranks. So as you can tell, this is an incredible crew. They have years of experience and they are well prepared. They have trained quite a bit in order to uh, execute the AX-3 mission, not only on Dragon systems and space station systems, but also, um, you know, just all the procedures that they have to work through and all the science that yeah. they're gonna have to do. Yeah, no, I, I think the word you hit on there, Kate, for me definitely is prepared. This crew, both individually and as a team, are so prepared for this mission. They have gone through years, collective years together, <laughs> um, uh, individually, but then as a team to train for this. And this is the first all European crew. This is a huge first for space flight. Um, they're representing five nations across the four of them. And missions like this really are critical for that future sustained low earth orbit commercialization of space flight that we talk about. Um, and this is one of those steps on my path. Yeah. yeah. So we have a great view here of the Dragon capsule, and you might have noticed that our views go in and out due to ground station coverage. We don't have views the entire time, so we we, we show them when we have them. Uh, and this view here is just breathtaking. Uh, it is a live view from the International Station of Dragon Freedom, uh, which has now successfully docked with the International Space Station. Uh, we had confirmation of docking complete at 2.56 a.m. Pacific time. And here you can see an animation of the uh, pressurized section, which is the top half, as well as the unpressurized section, which is the bottom half or the trunk. Um, some dimensions there, you can kind of get a feel for how big it is. Uh, the solar arrays there, uh, the, which is the black side of the trunk, those help to collect energy from the sun, which gets transverted, excuse me, which gets converted <laughs> uh, into p a power source for the Dragon capsule while it is on orbit, uh, both while it is at the station as well as when it is approaching and um, as well as after it has undocked. So, yeah, beautiful view. If you have, were watching our coverage earlier, there was a really cool moment, which we might actually get the reverse of it here coming up soon, but there was a very cool moment where... Um, the uh, I believe it was when when when when Gary was walking us through some some activity and uh, we were not able to see the capsule at or excuse me we weren't able to see uh, Dragon at all and then all of a sudden there was just a little bit of light yeah. and, it, and it did a great job of illustrating just how quickly the space station is orbiting the Earth it's going six, seventeen thousand five hundred miles per hour uh, and you complete an orbit every ninety minutes and it's hard to fathom yeah. what that what that feels like but the moment where it went, this Dragon capsule uh, went from being completely dark to just a sliver of light to fully lit yeah. like it is here. Uh, it was it was a very cool moment. It, like you blink and you miss it. Yeah. But you're right, it was 
pitch black and then the sun started rising on it, right? It had that image of it and then suddenly it was there. Yeah, it was, it was gorgeous. very cool. Now we mentioned that the crew has spent, um, uh, I, I guess at this point, it's almost like 37 and a half hours. Uh, but in that time they have completed uh, 25 orbits. So they, they did have some downtime, uh, fortunately, whenever they were on orbit during this, this journey. And I'm sure that they were taking lots of pictures yeah. and I've said it before, if I were if I were in the spacecraft, I would probably just have my face plastered to the window. <laughs> uh, somebody would have to fight me for, <laughs> for that seat <laughs> for access. Yeah, and yeah, so they they've completed 90 orbits, and I'm sure during that time they've they've taken in as many views as as they possibly can. Oh, exactly, and they're going to take in so many more, right? The next step that this crew is looking forward to is opening that hatch. Yeah. That is such a pivotal moment for any crew, right, to get into the space station and get into the ISS and go meet their their crew members that they're going to be spending their time with. Um, it is it is what the International Space Station represents. It's what it's for. Um, and they had so much to do on this 37 and a half hours, multiple orbits trip up there. But the next step really is crossing that hatch, meeting their coworkers mm -hmm. for the next two weeks, meeting their friends, yep. their neighbors, and getting to experience all of that in a much bigger atmosphere now you know yeah. they, they spent that time in the in the vehicle it's about to get a lot bigger and they're going to get, get they're going to get to go into the cupola yep. and see that view that we talked about they're going to get to experience living and working and all of the nuanced difficulties that come with that <laughs> in low earth orbit and it's going to be a really beautiful moment and that's really the next step that we're working towards is getting to open that hatch and it as gary mentioned it takes time for that to happen there's a lot of timelined events that work up to once the vehicle is on orbit now the, vehicle, now the crew that's on the ISS has to do a lot of preparation work in order to open that hatch and get that Dragon crew across. Yeah, so absolutely. So we're working towards that moment now. And it, most of the, yeah, all the physical work for those preparations are being done by the crew on board station right now. But there is a, also a lot of work being done by the crews here at SpaceX Mission Control here in Hawthorne, California, as well as... Uh, ISS mission control in Houston. So there's a lot of integrated operations happening here. Actually, great view here, as we have seen a couple of times of both of those control rooms, uh, SpaceX mission control on the left, um, Houston mission control there on the right, and uh, a lot of integrated activities. If you've been if you've been following along, you've heard either SpaceX Core, which is the crew operations and resource engineer, or NASA's Capcom, uh, which it Freedom Houston on the big loop. Hardline audio config is complete. How do you hear? Yeah, Kate, uh, almost perfectly you mentioned Capcom there, right? <laughs> um, but one of the things that we're really working towards... Houston with Freedom, we hear you loud and clear. We have you loud and clear as well. So that right there, just literally working through the procedures. Freedom Houston, can you try again on the big loop? Right now, trying to establish the communication on the big loop, uh, which is uh, everyone all together. The big loop is exactly as it sounds. It's um, it's Houston, it's the International Space Station, it's SpaceX, uh, it's Houston Dragon. Houston Freedom on the big loop, comp check. Loud and clear. Happy to say. All right, well, as we know, comm checks are an essential tool, an essential part of this effort, this joint effort that we have. And what the, the point that we're working towards at this moment is opening that hatch, and that will ultimately culminate in a um, uh, crew uh, crew meeting ceremony, a crew welcome ceremony, um, where, the, where the AX3 crew gets to meet their ISS crew. And so with that, we will toss it back over to Gary with Mission Control in Houston. Thank you, John. Thank you, Kate. Yes, we are monitoring the uh, operations here in Mission Control Houston. 
Uh, main thing we're looking forward to is that vestibule pressurization, but you just heard that hardline comm checks. That was that umbilical that was mated between the Dragon and the International Space Station, uh, providing power, no longer having to rely on the batteries and the solar arrays you see on the back end of Dragon from this view as the sun sets uh, and the International Space Station and Dragon orbit over northern China into an orbital uh, darkness. But that uh, hardline communication uh, looking good. The vestibule pressurization um, is also looking good. Uh, Laurel O'Hara working through the steps to go ahead and equalize that pressure uh, between the vestibule now there's a couple of steps. Um, first, of course, is equalizing that pressure and making sure uh, that the pressure between the Dragon hatch and Station hatch equalizes with that inside both of those vehicles. We're looking for about what we find at uh, sea level, 14.7 psi. Now, just as we did when we were pressurizing the vestibule before, we're going to uh, wait a little bit when we bring it up to pressure just to uh, do what's called a thermal relaxation. Um, when the pressure is brought up, there are these natural swings that occur due to the uh, temperature uh, inside of the vestibule, which has been exposed to vacuum up until the point of contact and capture from the dragon. So we'll just allow a couple of minutes for that to relax and just be absolutely sure that we have a good pressurization and that uh, we have no leaks indeed. We did again perform that leak check and everything looked good, which is why we are proceeding with these steps. But another caution before that A-pass hatch is open. Opened. Now, once that hatch is opened, Laurel O'Hara's uh, job is not done. It's not just opening up the hatch and then uh, opening up the Dragon hatch. The A-Pass hatch itself is outfitted with uh, what's called a docking target cross. Uh, now, this was the cross that you may have seen when uh, Dragon was approaching the International Space Station. It's just really this target uh, that allows for the guidance and navigation control equipment inside Dragon to lock on uh, uh, very precisely to the A-pass hatch and go in for uh, a uh, docking. Now that is a removable um, that is a removable part of the A-pass hatch uh, and part of the outfitting procedures. So Laurel O'Hara will go ahead and take that cross off and then cover the A-pass hatch just as a protective measure. Make sure no one's bumping their heads on the way in, um, as it can be a tight squeeze to go in between the Dragon and A-pass hatches and through the uh, pressurized mating adapter. She'll outfit the hatch, taking off the cross, uh, putting on a cover, and then she'll also route some ducts uh, through the pressurized mating adapter. That will blow some fresh uh, cabin air from inside the International Space Station to that vestibule. Uh, interesting thing that happens in uh, microgravity is uh, when air is not actively circulating in the pressurized mating adapter, which often that uh, node to forward hatch is closed, sometimes there can be these interesting pockets of uh, carbon dioxide. So this will flow some fresh air, make sure the temperature, make sure that air is well mixed and the temperature is good, um, and allow a very comfortable, safe, and uh, cushy float into the International Space Station for that Axiom mission three crew. So again, Laurel O'Hara, just to recap, is continuing with the pressurization of that uh, A-pass hatch, making sure that everything is good uh, for the Axiom Mission 3 crew. Uh, of course, it is not just um, Mission Control Houston and uh, Mission Control Hawthorne, California. Right down the road from here in Mission Control Houston is MCCA, Mission Control Axiom, who are going to be monitoring, who have been monitoring the crew throughout this journey and will continue to work in tandem with the International Space Station flight control teams here in Houston through many of the activities they have scheduled for their long stay aboard. Long meaning just about two weeks. Uh, we can expect them to uh, do some of the things that John was talking about, some science activities, many outreach activities, lots planned for the private astronauts uh, who are going to be spending their day, uh, their days aboard the station and maximize every day and the opportunities they have while on board the orbiting complex.
Again, we're standing by. We're following along on the uh, repressurization, the pressurization procedures between the uh, International Space Station and Dragon. The uh, Axiom Mission 3 astronauts docked aboard Dragon Freedom to the International Space Station at 4.42 a.m. Central Time, just a little more than an hour ago at this point. After that soft capture, they went through the sequence of um, the, f the docking sequence, which includes a hard dock and the 12 latches that secure Dragon to the International Space Station, mating umbilicals, stowing the soft capture ring, and ensuring that Dragon is secured to the International Space Station. Now the teams are working in tandem to bring that pressurization, the space in between those two hatches, those two vehicles, up to equalize so they can start opening up the hatches and uh, welcome the crew. Now it's been a long day for the crew, so uh, we can expect, based on the timeline that we're seeing, uh, hatches to open in perhaps about uh, 40 minutes. Um, and uh, an event to, a welcome event to happen uh, shortly after that. We'll follow the operations uh, just to see exactly when Action those times occur. Two, open, no condensation. Houston copies. That was confirmation from Laurel O'Hara and uh, Jasmine Mogbelli. The two of them were tasked with uh, monitoring Dragon's approach and docking to the International Space Station. Laurel O'Hara has been mostly at work, but of course, uh, Jasmine Mogbelli not far behind. Two of them working to, uh, like I said, pressurize that vestibule, which we just heard uh, has been pressurized and equalized. And that APAS hatch, this is the hatch on the International Space Station side, that is now open. So with that APAS hatch open, the uh, ISS crew can go through the steps to outfit the hatch uh, before they open up the Dragon hatch. Now we've been checking in with the Dragon crew, the Axiom Mission 3 crew, periodically. They've been working through the steps to doff their suits and prepare uh, for eventual ingress. Uh, while the International Space Station crew goes through these procedures. But just to review once again, uh, once the APAS hatch is open, there's a bit more steps to go. Uh, there's uh, a couple of steps to outfit the APAS hatch itself, including taking off the uh, docking target cross, uh, which was used to as part of the rendezvous uh, approach and docking procedures that allowed targeting from the Dragon spacecraft to accurately dock to the International Space Station. It sticks out a bit, so that'll be removed just as a safety uh, measure, as well as covering the APAS hatch. The APAS hatch is uh, made of uh, metal, so of course, the uh, covering the hatch will be another safety measure just to ensure um, when the uh, Axiom Mission 3 crew uh, ingresses, in case they do uh, bump their head, it won't be as uh, as uh, it won't be uh, as much of an issue. So those safety measures and just making sure that the pressurized mating adapter itself is nice and clear. Now, in addition to outfitting the hatch, they will also ensure that air is circulating properly in this vestibule, which is, uh, has been closed primarily, and uh, now especially the vestibule has been exposed to vacuum up until the point of docking. So uh, Laurel O'Hara and Jasmine Robelli will route some ducts, some air ducts, down into the pressurized mating adapter and blow some fresh cabin air from inside the International Space Station to circulate, get some of those pockets and circulate fresh air, equalize the temperature, uh, and make sure uh, that they are ready to welcome that crew.
Dragon B6 on the big loop, looking for a status on 4.012 and also 4.400. SpaceX left start with uh, 4.400. We're in section five, flushing the urine hose. We'll have a consumables report here in just a minute. Copy that in section five and consumables report coming shortly. That's a good copy. You'll notice as part of these joint operations, crew operations, resource engineer checking in with Haley the four, Dragon crew. 4.012 in section three. Uh, comfort garments for seats one, three, and four will be trashed. Mine were trashed after launch. And all four suits are disinfected and being dried in various stages. All right, copy, Dragon. So comfort garments for one, three, and four will be trashed and all suits are drying. Copy. SpaceX Freedom, would you like that inventory report on the big loop or on Dragon to ground? And Dragon, you can go ahead and bring that to Dragon to Ground. Physics Dragon on Dragon to Ground. And Dragon, I've got you loud and clear. So we're in uh, Port of 400, Section 3, and uh, when it comes to bottles consumed, water bottles, we have consumed uh, a total of um, 19 bottles. Uh, so all bottles in bag 201, all bottles in 202, all bottles in 204, and we have consumed four bottles from 203. All right, copy Dragon, 19 bottles, all in 201, 202, 204, and four consumed from 203. Meals consumed are all meals from uh, 301, all from 302, all from 304, and two from 303. Copy Dragon, all meals in 301, 302, 304, and two from 303. Thank you. So a quick recap, we're continuing to work through the procedures of preparing the uh, Axiom Mission 3 astronauts ingress into the International Space Station and welcome by the Expedition 70 crew. Activities happening on both ends of the hatches. We just heard a status report from the uh, crew inside Dragon Freedom uh, talking about their consumables and getting the uh, Dragon capsule itself ready for its uh, two week stay aboard the International Space Station. SpaceX Freedom back on from the left to right. now in section six of 4.400, ready to equalize. And Dragon, copy, you are in section six of 4.400.
The ISS crew has opened the APAS hatch and are working through docking target uninstall, so we'll get back to you shortly on when we're proceeding to hatch open. And Dragon SpaceX on the big loop, looking to see if we are good to come back on board with video. Give us uh, a few minutes, I'll call you back. Copy that. Station, Houston Dragon Station on Space Room 2. Station is ready for Dragon Hatch equalization. Houston copies, standby. And Freedom is ready as well. Now getting views from the inside of the International Space Station. You can see some of the work that's been done before the uh, crew was able to set up some of the cameras. Laura O'Hara there on the right. She's been the one working through the hatch opening procedures and she was working on the docking procedures as well. Commander of the International Space Station in the background there, Andreas Mogensen. In the foreground, Jasmine Mogbelli, NASA astronaut, has been working in tandem with Laura O'Hara to uh, monitor Dragon's arrival and the Axiom Mission 3 crew, as well as through the hatch opening steps.
So again, um, Laura O'Hara and Jasmine Mogbelli have methodically worked to opening up the hatches you see in the background there. So right in the back, uh, that is the pressurized mating adapter. You can see the on the forward end, right behind Andreas Mogensen is the node to forward hatch that is open and stowed at the top portion of your screen. And then uh, deep in the uh, pre uh, pressurized mating adapter is the A-pass hatch, which has been outfitted for uh, the Axiom Mission 3 crew's arrival. Docking target has been removed, covers have been added, uh, and ducks have uh, been brought in to circulate air, and you can see at this point have uh, have already been pulled out. So the area in, in, within the pressurized mating adapter and vestibule has been um, equalized with the pressure of the International Space Station. The next step really is opening up the uh, Dragon Hatch. So the teams are just assessing just to make sure that that is okay to do, but you can see crews gathering right now. They got their cameras ready, um, smiles, and ready to welcome the Axiom Mission 3 uh, astronauts to the International Space Station. Coming into frame is uh, Satoshi Furukawa. Heading left from this view into the Japanese experiment module. Furukawa with uh, high-definition microphone in tow. We'll start to equip it um, and will be used as part of the welcome ceremony. We can expect the uh, full Expedition 70 crew to be there to greet the uh, Axiom Mission 3 astronauts. See hugs and handshakes as they ingress. By the time we have all four um, Axiom crew members on board the station, the station population will be up to 11. Station and Freedom, Houston on the Big Loop. Stand by for equalization, expected to take three minutes. Freedom copies. Michael Lopez Alegria, the commander uh, of Dragon Freedom for the Axiom Mission 3 uh, mission confirming uh, that he'll start working through the steps to equalize the pressure and to open up the hatch of uh, Dragon Freedom. We should be expecting ingress momentarily. In the meantime, we have more members of Expedition 70 gathering to welcome the crew. On the right there, you see Konstantin Borisov, who flew up with the uh, Crew 7 uh, cadre to the International Space Station.
Again, two uh, control rooms working in tandem through these operations. The Expedition 70 crew standing by, awaiting for equalization to go ahead and open up the hatch of Dragon. Should be expecting hatch open momentarily to welcome the Axiom Mission 3 astronauts to the International Space Station. Team's just uh, ensuring the equalization is good before going ahead to open up the hatch, but we should be expecting that momentarily. International Space Station Commander Andreas Mogensen heading towards the hatch. On the right, Oleg Kononenko, another Roscosmos cosmonaut, and Nikolai Chub. Expedition 70 now Dragon rounded out. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. You have a go for hatch opening per your decal followed by the remaining actions in procedure 4.400, section 6, and confirming uh, if we are good to come back on board with cameras. SpaceX, freedom, copy, stand by one. Again, the seven members of Expedition 70 gathered in Node 2. In the background there is the forward end of the International Space Station. At the end of the pressurized mating adapter is Dragon Freedom and the Axiom Mission 3 crew members. SpaceX Freedom, you may come on board and we're opening the hatch. Copy that, Freedom. SpaceX in Houston on the big loop, the Dragon 4 hatch is open. SpaceX copies. 6.13 a.m. Central Time, Dragon Hatch is open.
Jasmine Moog belly in the background there with the still camera. Way down in the pressurized mating adapter is Andreas Mogensen, International Space Station Commander. Working with the uh, Dragon crew to open up the Dragon hatch and we should be seeing some of the private astronaut mission crew members. Freedom on the big loop, we are complete with 4-400 entering ISS. Copy that, Freedom, welcome aboard. Coming together first through the hatches, Marcus Wundt and Alper Gizrauchi of Sweden and Turkey, respectively, being greeted by the crew of Expedition 70. The two are followed by Walter Villade, pilot of the Dragon Freedom. Last coming into the International Space Station, Commander Michael Lopez Alegria. Eleven crew members representing seven nations now on board the International Space Station. Again, 11 crew members on board the International Space Station now, representing Expedition 70 and the Axiom Mission 3 crew. We're now in a short handover period. We should be regaining the video and audio from the International Space Station momentarily to celebrate with the crew the welcome of Axiom Mission 3 to the International Space Station. With the crew uh, now on board the International Space Station, all hatches open between the uh, Dragon spacecraft and the International Space Station. Once we regain video from the, from the International Space Station, we should be uh, preparing for setting up a welcome ceremony. All 11 crew members will gather for some remarks uh, to commemorate this, mom this uh, moment. Back on board the International Space Station. Again, Expedition 70 gathered with the Axiom Mission 3 crew. All chatting ahead and uh, having some initial remarks uh, amongst each other before we begin that formal welcome ceremony.
With you on two. And we'll go on time for the event, so at uh, 35. We copy. So the crew of Expedition 70 and, uh, again, Axiom Mission 3 astronauts on board the International Space Station confirming uh, they have a set block of time for starting this welcome ceremony, and they will take it. Right now, 6.20 a.m. We should be starting that welcome ceremony in 15 minutes. Station Houston on two, we are standing by for seen and voice. Copy, I just need to change the batteries. Just a second. We copy. Multinational crew currently gathered in Node 2 ahead of the welcome ceremony. We're expecting that to start in at uh, 6.35 a.m. Central Time. Jasmine Mobelli, a NASA astronaut in the foreground, speaking with Oleg Kononenko, Roscosmos cosmonaut. To his right is Roscosmos cosmonaut Konstantin Borisov, speaking with uh, Walter Villade of Italy. Uh, uh, and the pilot of Dragon Freedom for uh, Axiom Mission 3. Expedition 70 member Nikolai Chub coming into frame behind Mug Belly. Freedom Crew Houston on the big loop. Uh, just a friendly reminder, we need for you to complete step six and two decimal one zero two prior to the event. Yeah, Houston, this is Freedom on the big loop. We are complete with 6.1, your go for IMV fan activation. Copy, we'll get it in work. Station, we are ready for the voice check. Thanks, Andy. We can use another 10 count, please.
Good scene and voice check. As is typical with uh, in-flight events aboard the International Space Station, conducting a scene and voice check. And we're seeing more members of Expedition 70 gather ahead of the uh, welcome ceremony. Of course, we still have uh, Commander of Axiom Mission 3, Michael Lopez Alegria, and the mission specialists that were aboard, Dragon Freedom, Alper, Ge Alper Gezerauchi, and Marcus Want. In frame here, we have pilot uh, Walter Villade of Italy. To his right, to our right, his left, commander of uh, Expedition 70 aboard the International Space Station, Andreas Mogensen of Denmark. Going right from there is Konstantin Borisov and Oleg Koninenko of Roscosmos. Continuing around the circle, Laurel O'Hara and Jasmine Mogbelli of NASA, and on the left, Nikolai Freedom Chu Freedom crew, Houston, on the big loop, you have a go for 2.102, steps 6.2 and 6.3. 6.2 and 6.3 in work. And to clarify, Freedom, you have a go to complete the rest of step six. Again, we're tracking towards uh, the welcome ceremony of all 11 crew members on board the International Space Station starting at 6.35 a.m. Central Time. This is really the middle of the day for the Expedition 70 crew members and Axiom Mission 3 crew members. Right after the welcome ceremony, uh, their day is not quite done. All crew members will, part will participate in an, in an initial International Space Station safety briefing just to ensure they're up to date with the latest uh, information and the freshest information as they proceed about the rest of their day. Some of the crew members will then enjoy a lunch while the remaining crew members are briefed by the International Space Station uh, Expedition 70 Commander Andreas Mogensen, uh, who will brief the private astronauts who have just been welcomed on board the International Space Station Axiom Mission 3. Astronauts will get a briefing from the uh, commander. Afterwards, the uh, Axiom Mission 3 astronauts will proceed with cargo unloading and some initial experiment and equipment setup uh, before the end of their day. Tomorrow, Sunday, is a relatively light day for the Expedition 70 and private astronaut crew members, continuing with some cargo transfer ops, but setting up some initial experiments uh, and enjoying a lighter day before they really hit the ground running for their first week aboard the International Space Station. Axiom Mission 3 is expected to be a 14-day mission. Right now we're targeting approximately February 3rd, pending weather, uh, for uh, the undock opportunity for uh, 
the Axiom Mission 3 astronauts to leave the International Space Station and splash down off the coast of Florida. But of course, starting Monday, we'll begin um, a myriad of scientific and education activities uh, for them to complete. All this work has been timelined in months in advance uh, to coordinate the schedules of 11 crew members on board the International Space Station to ensure there is a seamless transition of, of using different scientific experiments and facilities uh, and that 11 crew members can get an incredible amount of science and discovery done in a short amount of time. SpaceX in Houston from Freedom on the Big Loop. We're complete through step eight of 2.102. Houston copies. And SpaceX copies. Axiom Mission 3 crew member and mission specialist aboard Dragon, Marcus Want, coming into frame. We'll start seeing all 11 crew members come into frame as they close out some of their activities. We're expecting to begin the welcome ceremony on time in just about three minutes. Station Houston on the big loop. We are two minutes out from the event. Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? 
We are ready for the event. Please begin the welcome ceremony. Andy Houston on two, can you check the mic, please? <laughs> on, beha on behalf of the uh, Expedition 70 crew, I'd like to welcome uh, Axiom 3 on board the International Space Station. This is uh, an incredibly exciting time for human spaceflight with the third private mission which is allowing many more countries to participate in the scientific research and technology development that we do on board this orbiting laboratory. Uh, we have doubled the number of nationalities on board the space station, going from four to eight, which I think is a great testament to the international collaboration which underpins this uh, marvelous space station. I'm also very proud as a European to welcome four other Europeans. I think this is the first time in the history of the space station that we have five Europeans on board uh, at the same time. And certainly uh, it's the first time that we have two Scandinavians uh, on board. So I'm very happy to welcome my, f my fellow Scandinavian, Marcus. Um, but we look forward to the next two weeks uh, to an intense period of work on board the space station. So a big warm welcome to Axiom 3 uh, from us on board the space station. Thanks, Andy. I think you said it very well. This is really a, um, a symbol of how Axiom in conjunction with NASA and all the partners is working to expand human access to low Earth orbit. And we've got, uh, as Andy said, so many nationalities represented on board, and this is really symbolic of what we're trying to do to open it up, not only to other nations, also to individuals, to researchers, to continue the great work that's been going on on board the ISS for the last two decades plus. The ride uphill was uh, pretty exciting. Uh, never gets old. Um, I think we probably spent a few more hours in Dragon than we felt like we needed to, but uh, it was all good. Great vehicle. Thanks to you at SpaceX for putting that thing together for us and for such smooth operation. Let me pass the microphone down to my crewmates just for a couple words, and then I'd like to get it back at the very end, if that's okay. Walter? Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Uh, I want to, first of all, uh, thanks to the expedition crew for this uh, warm uh, welcoming. It's uh, amazing to be up here and to see how much really all the countries and this uh, amazing uh, international collaboration has made in space, uh, creating this outpost. And I'm very grateful uh, for Italy and uh, just a few words in Italian. So thank you, grazie e un uh, grazie a tutta l'Italia. Vorrei ringraziare non solo l'aeronautica militare, ma anche tutte le istituzioni che hanno portato qui questa missione in questo straordinario contesto di collaborazione internazionale in cui abbiamo portato scienza. E per due settimane saremo qui a collaborare e lavorare con questo equipaggio internazionale straordinario. Grazie mille. E now I hand over to my colleagues and friend uh, Alper from Turkey. Thank you so much. Uh, I would like to thanks first for your kind hospitality to Expedition 7 crew over here. Uh, they were wa waiting for us at the door, actually, so that was a very nice, <laughs> kind welcoming for us. Um, I would like to thank for everybody for their great effort uh, for us to be able to make it over here in the last eight months training period, as well as all the counterparts. Uh, for their contribution for our safe travel uh, to make it over to ISS. We are happy as Turkey uh, to step for the first time in our history and um, looking forward to contribute into the science and research uh, efforts over here. And I would like to say a couple of words uh, to my country. Turkey Cumhuriyeti'ni kurarak bizlere emanet eden Gazi Mustafa Kemal Atatürk ve silah arkadaşlarına bu vatan için canını veren tüm şehitlerimize e, buraya adım atmamızı sağlayan güçlü iradesiyle devletimize ve bu imkanları bize sağlayan milletimize şükranlarımı sunuyorum. İstikbal göklerdedir. Now I would like to pass over the microphone to my dear friend Marcus Wand from 
Uh, Sweden representing here, Isa. Thank you, Alper. I also want to say first a big uh, thank you to Expedition 70 for gre greeting us and knocking on our door uh, in the middle of uh, everything. <laughs> it was pretty amazing. Been flying around and orbiting Earth for 36 hours or so, and then someone knocks on the door. That's pretty strange. <laughs> and uh, uh, also, uh, I want to say that having the, this many, many nationalities uh, on a mission like this, and it just tells me that uh, collaboration can take you very far. Entering uh, the hatch here and meeting other people in space from so many different cultures and places around the world just uh, give me a strong sense of future, uh, which is which is awesome. I uh, also want to say a few words in uh, in Swedish to uh, Sweden. So, uh, hey, allihopa där hemma. Det här är förstås en fantastisk känsla. Uppskjutningen var en uh, resa. Jag har aldrig varit med något liknande förut. Och, uh, Sen att få se jorden från ovan och sväva runt och känna att Sverige på ett så kraftfullt och beslutsamt sätt valde att ställa sig långt fram i utvecklingen igen, vilket vi ofta gör och fortsätter vara ett innovationsland och visa andra att gott samarbete fungerar. För vi har också här pionjerat det nya sättet för Europa att ta sig upp och öka frekvensen i rymdutforskningen på ett sätt som, som vi inte har sett förut. Så otroligt stolt att få representera Sverige och Europa här uppe. All right, thank you. Mike. Okay. So now I'd like to uh, continue a bit of a tradition that we've started, and that is to award the Universal Astronaut Symbol Pin, if I don't lose it, to each of these um, steely-eyed aviators. Uh, I think it's telling that these will be the seventh, eighth, and ninth people that uh, Axiom has provided pins. In fact, since we started flying in 2022, no agency has pinned more new astronauts. And again, this is symbolic of us trying to open up the access to low Earth orbit to more and more people. So first of all, Colonel Walter Villade, it is my pleasure to, no, no, I'm gonna put it on you. Oh, right. <laughs> You'll be number 609. Wow, that's a privilege, Mike. Thank you so much. Let me see if I can stabilize myself without missing. Guys can, uh, if you can slide down yeah. and have uh, these guys slide here. Right. Thank you. This is a real pleasure to award this pen to the first Turkish astronaut in history. I don't think I need to say anything more, Alper. Can you hold the mic? Yep. go. And finally, Marcus. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Mike. I failed to mention Alper obviously is uh, number 610 and Marcus is 611. And finally, I want to thank all of you guys again for welcoming us aboard. I know that it's tough uh, to have guests in your house, and we promise not to spill any red wine on your white carpet. <laughs> thank you, Andy. Once again, uh, welcome, and we look forward to working with you for the next two weeks. It's going to be an incredible mission, and uh, we're excited to have guests. Thank you to all participants, and welcome aboard Axiom 3. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications. All right, 11 astronauts on board the International Space Station working together for science and discovery. 
It's going to be a, a very busy and jam-packed couple of weeks with uh, a full space station, uh, but certainly nothing that can't be handled. This will be the third time we have a private astronaut crew on board the International Space Station, the third time we have 11 astronauts as part of this mix as complements of private and government astronauts, and of course the private astronauts representing their own governments, expanding nations to seven nations right now on board station, conducting science uh, for uh, the benefit, really, of the world. For that, uh, really, that will conclude our coverage here uh, in Mission Control Houston before, of course, the Expedition uh, uh, crew and the Axiom Mission 3 astronauts. Really, the journey has just begun. Uh, so that'll wrap it up here in Houston. I'll toss it over to Kate for some closing words from Hawthorne. Thanks so much, Gary. It really was so wonderful to see them all together. Some really nice words there uh, from our commander, MLA. But on that note, we're going to wrap up our live joint coverage of AX-3's arrival to the International Space Station. It's been an honor to support the Axiom-3 mission thus far. We wish Marcus, Alper, Walter, and MLA a successful time on station, and we look forward to joining you when it's time to return home. Yeah, Kate, from launch to docking, it has been an absolute pleasure sharing this desk with you again, so thank you. Over the course of the crew's time on station, we will be producing mission updates from Axiom's Space Station Development Facility with Commander Lopez Alegria sharing highlights and special moments with Walter, Alper, and Marcus. So please be sure to visit axiomspace.com and follow the Axiom social media channels for real-time updates. And with that, on behalf of SpaceX, Axiom Space, and NASA, thank you all for tuning in to watch from wherever you're watching from. With that, good morning, good evening, or good night. <laughs>